on everyone, Jax here, and today we are behind the wheel of the 2022 Genesis G80. And I want to talk to you about why the G80 is pretty good from behind the wheel and why Genesis in general is just killing it right now. This is a 2022 Genesis G80, and I've been driving it for the past week, and um, I'm really impressed with the overall way that this car conducts itself. So if you don't know kind of what the G80 is, I would sort of classify it as Genesis's overly large kind of mid-sized luxury sedan. There is one positioned above it, the G90, that's in that's going to be kind of like your, you know, Mercedes S-Class competitor. But the G80 is more of a 5 Series E-Class competitor in size and price, even though I think you could consider it maybe slightly larger than those cars, although those cars have gotten bigger. And so from behind the wheel, the G80 is meant to have that luxurious German sports sedan vibe, but also be expected to be kind of cosseting and premium feeling and you know it's not quite as hard edged as the G70 which has a very firm ride and sort of sport prestige trim. This is a sport prestige G80 and that's important mainly because in doing my research for this piece on the G80 I noticed that some uh, automotive journalists like you know Motor Trend and some other outlets had said that some of the trims of the G80 as well as the prior model of the G80 were like a little unsettled. They weren't quite as refined. I think that's important to note because this Sport Prestige model in the summer trim, which means you get the excellent Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, feels fantastic. I mean, the ride is incredibly well controlled. I'm in comfort mode right now, and the ride is a great combination between body control and sort of firmness. Like it doesn't lose its composure. I say that a lot. There's a lot of cars that are soft, but they kind of lose their composure. And what do I mean by that? I mean, they never stop moving. They're always doing something. That is not how the G80 feels. Like right now we're going down sort of the straightaway on our way to the handling road. And when we get on the handling road, I'll leave it in comfort mode, um, but, and I'll tell you why in a second, but it absorbs the terrible pavement of the handling road without ever kind of passing too many of those motions into the cabin, even when it hits like kind of the secondary motions on a larger bump or transition. So we're turning onto the handling road right now, and this first sort of part of the handling road has a lot of smaller bumps and undulations, meaning there's a lot of motion hitting the car right here. And as the G80 goes over it, especially on the right-hand side, it returns you to kind of serene, normal driving position very quickly. Coming around the first turn, there is a, a decent amount of roll, but the turn in is quicker than you might think because this G80 has the two degrees of rear wheel steering assist, which is pretty cool. So. With all-wheel drive, rear-wheel steering assist, an excellent suspension, it also has the road preview feature, which is scanning the road right now, looking for imperfections, and preparing me for them, such as the big bump. Let's see what happens when we hit that. Yeah, it was soft. There was a secondary motion, but it got me back under control quickly. So all in all, I'm impressed with the way that this car rides, especially in this sort of comfort setting. Now, what I'm going to do now is switch over to sport mode, which means I get a cool gauge cluster change. I actually really like Genesis's gauge cluster where the needles become like little lightsabers or something. Also, bravo Genesis for when you hit sport mode, having the seat bolsters immediately firm up. That's just a cool little touch that really helps. Um, In sport mode, the G80 does a really good sort of facsimile of a sport sedan. It it's still not nearly as raucous as the G70. I like that the G70 just doesn't care. It's like, I'm a sports sedan, screw you, I'm doing my thing. And I like that the G80 takes a little of that edge off. However, I do have one complaint. Steering feel is good. It's quick off center, a little numb, but like quick off center. Throttle calibration is excellent. 
brake pedal feel across the board in all modes is a little grabby, just a little bit grabby at the initial bite and a little bit grabby coming to a stop. You get used to it, not a big deal, just know that it's there. My main complaint in sport mode, kind of going through this right hander here, is that the car firms up, but the suspension is actually still giving me too much comfort. It's not as soft as like when I had the Lexus um, LS 500 and I was like, this is way, way too soft for a sporty mode. Um, it's not that soft. It is firmer, but it is nowhere near, nowhere near as firm as like the G70, which is like teeth shattering firm. And that's true even if I click it over into sport plus mode. Yes, this has a sport plus mode, which also disables the traction control. It's like, oh, you're on a racetrack now in your G80? Let's go. I don't know why really, but, but it's there and it's kind of fun. Maybe you want to do burnouts in your giant executive sedan, but I'll turn it into sport plus mode and just bury it. There's that engine. It's a 3.5 liter V6 turbocharged, 375 horsepower, 391 pound feet of torque, which is healthy. Not a bad sound. And it holds the gear. It's, it's hilarious how it holds the gears. I've got shift paddles here. I could like totally make this thing dance if I wanted to. This is the firmness of the suspension, though, that I think you should have in sport mode. And you can customize all this in the, you know, customizable driver mode. But I just love the way that this is in sport plus. I just would like to have the traction control as a backup. In fact, I'm coming down this hill. I'm going to smash into this bridge. Not literally. I mean that there's a bump when you hit the bridge. And I think in sport plus mode, this is going to be totally fine. In fact, there's a Nissan Pathfinder driving, well, let's see, 20 under the speed limit right in front of me. So Sport Plus mode is not without its charms, believe me. There's some rough uh, pavement right here and you feel it. It's just, it's more feedback, more visceral, more engaging. And I, I love the fact that they include it, although it's like literally holding gear right now, which is just silly. So let me get out of this mode. And then you go back into comfort and the seat automatically gets more cushy. God, I love that. Now, some of that does come at a gas mileage cost. Um, I've been seeing about 21-ish miles per gallon um, average. And that's with a mix of driving. I've been driving it to work, suburban driving, stop and go traffic, and then a long trip to North Georgia for one of Halley's volleyball matches. So 21 miles per gallon average is not great, but it's not terrible. I mean, you know, there's plenty of things that get worse gas mileage that have the speed, but in light of our sort of current gas situation, it's not this or even that good. Now, I mentioned these seats, okay? These seats are great. I've got a messed up back. I say that a lot. I'm six foot six. I say that even more. And I am in excellent comfort. I've got my memory position set exactly where I want it. I've got my lumbar dialed way up because, well, mainly because my back is so screwed up. I need that lumbar. And this car has a feature that is just great. It's got this driver fatigue feature where after you've been driving for a while, like when we went to North Georgia the other day, it starts pulsing the bolsters and the lumbar and the seat back to help alleviate the fatigue of being in one position for too long of a time. It's not massage, it's more of like, movement and therapy or something. It's really cool and I actually really enjoy it. I appreciate that feature. Also in the main review, if you haven't seen that, go watch that. I talk a little bit about the technology in this car. The tech is awesome. The infotainment system is great. The rotary dial for like your infotainment features, not difficult to figure out, pretty user friendly. I do enjoy uh, the way that the infotainment works in this car. It feels advanced without being intimidating. I had the Mercedes GLS a couple videos back and that thing is like a you know, tech buffet, but like you kind of know it, like you you kind of feel that. It's it's like everything you do, everything you touch, it's like, you know, menus and submenus. And I generally like the Mercedes infotainment. It's it's decently easy to figure out, but you're never unaware of that level of technology. In this, it's it's just more like user friendly. You know, the map is huge. It's like 14 and a half inch display. Um, it's easy to sync up my phone to Bluetooth. I don't know why CarPlay is still wired in this. That seems like a bit of an oversight, but other than that, very, very nice car to live with.
Also, shout out the material quality in here. Literally everything you touch is leather, soft touch, carbon fiber, metal trim. Like, this is an awesome place to be. This is a fantastic cabin to sit in. I talked about that a little bit more in the main review as well, but it's worth noting from behind the wheel, this steering wheel feels so good. It, it just feels so good. The leather feels so good on the steering wheel. The hand grips, like Genesis is sweating the details. And that's kind of what I want to sum up with here at the end. Look, let's talk about this for just a second. Lots of automakers that are not German luxury automakers try to be German luxury automakers. Cadillac did it when they switched to rear wheel drive. Infiniti did it when they switched to rear wheel drive back with the original G35. Lexus has tried to do it, claiming it with the IS, you know, sports sedan and the GS, which then they got rid of for some reason. And now you have the Koreans doing it with Genesis standing above Hyundai and Kia. In my opinion, over a very short window of time, I don't know of another non-German luxury brand that has so kind of accurately pinpointed that intangible quality that makes the German luxury brand so desirable better than Genesis. I feel like in just the past year, the, the Genesis vehicles that I've driven just have that special sauce, that little bit of something, and they haven't quite cracked it yet, but now all of a sudden they are. They're starting to crack it. It was like when Cadillac debuted the CTS and they evolved it over time, and now you have the CT4 and the CT5, which dynamically are really, really good. I feel like Genesis has accomplished this in, in like a year or two. It, it's just nuts to think of like when they committed to this path, how quickly everything started to change for them. and. I am incredibly impressed. I mean, I said it last year, the GV70 was the best vehicle I drove last year. It is insanely good. It is so cool, it looks so cool, it drives so well, it's amazingly desirable. The interior, oh my gosh, it's just such a fabulous luxury SUV. And now I'm here behind the wheel of this G80 that they just sort of recently redesigned and it's like all of the criticisms that the journalist said, you know, I'm not quite there with the German brands. Genesis is like, okay, okay, I got you. And now they're addressing them. And this interior feels phenomenal. And the driving experience feels better. It feels special. And, and it looks striking on the outside. It looks like nothing else on the road. Everywhere I went, people were like looking at it and friends and non-friends, random strangers were like, what is that? It catches people's atten attention. And I just really, really admire what Genesis is doing with their design and their like brand philosophy. I mean, I don't want to end this review on a negative note, but look at some of the competitors, Acura, Lexus, Acura redesigns the Integra and it's a lightly disguised Civic hatchback SI. And that's fine and everything because the Civic is an excellent vehicle, but like, does it make you feel like it's even remotely in the same league as something like this? No, I mean, it, it, like, no, it's not even close. And then there's Lexus. Like I drove um, the IS500 at a track event a few videos back. Please go watch that. Nobody watched that and it makes me sad. But I, I love that vehicle. I love that powertrain. I love, love, love that V8 engine. I just think that the Lexus naturally aspirated V8 is so underappreciated. One of the just great V8s out right now. Absolutely adore that powertrain. But when you get into that IS500, it's old, like noticeably old, like a Lexus 10 years ago old. And you go, oh man, like this car, it looks so good on the outside. The engine sings the song of my people. It, it's just a fantastic experience. And, and then from behind the wheel, which is the freaking name of this like segment I make, you're like, Ugh, I mean, okay. And then you get in something like this. You sit down, you grip this perfectly shaped wheel with this beautiful leather, sitting in this comfortable seat that adjusts to your drive mode, 3D gauges in front of you, and this car just costs it to you until you press this button a few times, and then it wants to play. It looks good 
feels good and it spoils you. And from behind the wheel or outside the vehicle or any combination in between, this feels like $72,000. This feels like a special car. And that's the thing, that's the magic. Great work, Genesis. I am certainly a believer. And I hope you guys watching this strongly consider becoming believers yourselves. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope that I am communicating as an enthusiast dad. Um, this car, like the GV70, I could immediately see myself using this car every day and enjoying every minute of it, okay? The, the whole point of this enthusiast dad thing is that like, I have practical needs to consider. Yes, Ella just turned 16 and, and can drive now, but like Hallie is still 12 and I have to drive her around and carry her to volleyball. In fact, point of fact, she had a volleyball tournament in North Georgia. We didn't just carry ourselves to that. We carried her friend and her mom in the back seat, three across, two kids and a mom in the back seat. Everybody was perfectly fine. We had our heated seats, we had our cooled seats, we had our climate control for everybody in the car. Like it, it just was a super nice car to drive for an hour, hour and a half. Um, I prefer cars, honestly. Now the GV70 is incredible. I certainly wouldn't mind having a GV70, but I kind of prefer cars. And this car costs about 10 grand more than the GV70 I tested and I love it. I, I mean, this is like for me, man. I, I I love this combination of I'm getting luxury for my money, I'm getting striking design for my money, and I'm getting a good driving experience for my money. And it's useful. I got a huge back seat, I got a big trunk, I got all the space in the world. I just can't say enough good things about Genesis, guys. I hope that is effectively communicated. Let me know in the comments what you think about Genesis. Are you seriously considering them? I've heard more people say that they are, but I want to know, is that true? Are you thinking about Genesis as a competitor, if not superior to some offerings like Acura and Lexus? And do you think it challenges the Germans? I'd love to hear from you, all right? Until then, ride safe, drive safe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Oh, fine. Let's do one more aggressive pull. We got to do it in Sport Plus, though. All right, let's go. Oh, yeah, there's that short shifted. <laughs> oh, that eight speed automatic transmission. It does such a good job of being invisible when you don't want to feel it or notice it. But when you get into the sport modes, I will say one downside, one downside of the eight speed automatic is that it's sport mode on downshifts. It's actually too noticeable because I don't think sport mode is, is extreme enough, like I said. So like when you're downshifting, as it comes to a stop, it's like, it's like giving you like a little punch, like, hey, I'm sporty. And I'm like, no, 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 not yet, not yet. I would actually, in my custom mode, put on sport plus suspension, sport steering, and comfort transmission. That would be like my daily perfection.